Welcome back. We're here with another Teacher of the Year profile, and we are speaking with uh, Mr. Jeff Carter, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Congratulations, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell us about yourself. Tell us where you teach, and, and tell us what you teach. Okay. Well, my name is Jeff Carter. Um, I'm currently an art teacher. I teach at Folsom High School for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Um, Originally, when I started teaching, I, you know, I always really describe my the beginning of my career, if you will, um, subbing all around the district, kind of getting an idea for where I wanted to be. Um, originally, I think I was pretty much set on secondary education, and I knew I wanted to do the art and emphasize that. Um, but after subbing at different places, I actually ended up at Mitchell Middle School, where they uh, was able to really just kind of take that head on and be able to get a good art program going there. That was part of the quote unquote elective wheel, if you will. Um, so the students had culinary education, they would have computer applications, and then they would also come over to me for part of the year and get their art education. Um, currently at Folsom High School, we have a large art department. Um, there's a lot of different sectors of the arts there that we focus on. We've got digital arts, we have uh, video production, kind of like what we do here. Um, we've also got sculpture, so there's just some, some great options. And then of course I teach drawing and painting. Um, and the people always say, well what's the difference between drawing and painting is those two mm -hmm. different sections. Um, but really they're, they're interrelated in all the masters that we base our education off of there. It's kind of a, an academy style drawing, if you will, or, or art class, if you will, um, is really based on this idea that the drawing and the, uh, and the painting, they're just, they go hand in hand, they build get, on each other. Do you get the feeling that with art and others, we're getting more of a refocus now on art and, and people again understanding the importance of it in, in education? You know, I know we are. I know we are in the district, and I and I talk to a lot of other educators in California and uh, in different parts of the nation. I've got friends all over the country where, and they seem to the, the 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 feedback that I'm getting overall seems to be really positive. I know that in the wake of uh, the financial crisis that we were having nationwide, you know, five years ago, um, it's it's nice to be able to see people say, hey, you know, we've got some more funds for this kind of stuff, and we're willing to really recognize the fact that the arts do make a difference and they have a positive impact. On the performance of the students um, in all in all subjects, and it really can make a powerful impact on the students' uh, focus as a student on campus. Well, I'm sure you get a lot of students too who say, "Oh, I'm not good at this. I don't." Oh, I'm not. And then absolutely. by the end of the end of the year, they're probably, you know at least confident in, in what they do. Yeah, you know, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I think that that's one of the things I think that really enables me to see education through a different light. The idea that so many of my students, as drawing students, if you will, drawing and painting students, come to me with this really low expectation for themselves. And they have already put themselves in this box and they say, I can't draw, right? We all know the old cliche. They say, I can only draw a stick figure, right? Mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, but what kind of art education have you had in the past? And that's really varied in some cases. I have a lot of students that come to me and they have had quite a bit of experience. They've had quite a bit of practice. And they've, uh, I even have some students that have private um, art educators on the side. There's not a lot of those. I'm um, seeing more of it now, um, but in any case, really varied results as far as the student's ability to perform in the art world when they come to me. Um, and I think that's true for any educators. I think that any math or science teacher in the nation knows that when you get that group on day one, you cannot realistically expect all the students to be at the same place. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that knowing that and being realistic about that reality is I think one of the keys to um, any teacher's success and say, okay, well how am I going to tackle this? How am I going to hook these students and get them to see that what really matters is that they're better today than they were yesterday. They're and they better. All, and they all come in at different levels. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I think that's true for all subjects, no matter what. Uh, when you get all these different students, they're at different levels. Um, you know, we can pigeonhole these students to a, for, for good reasons, you know, in a certain grade or a certain level. Um, you know, when I get a student that's quote unquote in drawing and painting three, advanced drawing and painting, that's great, you know, and the, the label has its purpose. But again, I cannot expect all of those students to come to me on day one in quote unquote drawing and painting three with the same level, the same expertise. Mm -hmm. So now, this year we're starting with the Common Core. Mm -hmm. and so how do you see that having an impact on, on what you do mm -hmm. in art? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you know, the Common Core, I think, is something that 
that is going to be able to enable all educators to focus on really what matters, what matters most, and to be able to stay focused. What I like about what I'm hearing about Common Core now is that it seems like, you know, I was just hearing yesterday, Arnie, uh, Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan was talking about Common Core. He was on National Public Radio Live. And what I liked about what he was saying and what I seem to be hearing in the community is Common Core is all about getting students to the same place but not being so rigid and unrealistic about this that we are only merely focused on one number and getting all the students to be at the same place at the same time. To a certain degree, that's just unrealistic and therefore, you know, I think having unrealistic goals no matter what profession you're in whether in your marketing or sales or whatever, is just not going to get you to where you need to be. So I think that getting all of the states on the same page and having a having a curriculum that you think that that everyone agrees, you know, is a focal point and is a good goal for everyone. I know that we still have some states that are, have not. There's about five states now that still have not adapted the Common Core standards. Um, but in any case, I think that we're headed on the right path. I think after the NCLB. Um, I think a lot of politicians and community members and teachers realized that you know, there, was, there was some good aspects to that, that the idea of trying to move everyone forward is good. I mean, we're, you know, if we want to improve right. our schools, we've got to have goals. But I think that currently with the Common Core standards, I think we're moved in the right direction and we're focused on the, the stuff that really matters most. And getting kids to not only give you the answer, but tell you why they got the answer and how they got there. And That's right. The Common yeah. Core absolutely is focused on critical thinking. And the interesting thing about that aspect, that, that important philosophy of Common Core about getting students to be able to, um, to really dive into information and to be able to uh, use their critical thinking skills and, if you will, quote unquote, think outside of the box. We really, we're not going to be able to compete in a global economy. And we all know that that's where we're headed, whether we like it or not with the technology the way it's moving, we're now a global economy. We are no longer isolated. If we're going to be able to really compete on a global economy, we cannot just have students that are cookie cutter students that are just saying one plus one equals two and are thinking in a very linear path like that. Mm -hmm. We need more students that are going to be able, future leaders, they're going to be able to think outside of the box and they're going to be critical thinkers and going to really be able to take this information and say, you know, really, what does it mean? What does it mean? Um, and, and to me, that's really important. I, and I, I don't see that as, oh man, here's one more thing we've got to do. Because we all know educators are stressed out. We all know that it's a big job that we're doing. We love what we do, but it's a big job. Um, but for me, the cool thing is when I hear something like that, I think, yeah, that's, that's what I've been trying to do for a long time. I think the arts can fully embrace the Common Core standards in that regards because I mean, that's what the arts are all about. It's all about, hey, there's no one exact way to approach this art project. Mm -hmm. There's no one end. Um, you know, we're not all going to end do this project in exactly the same way. I think it's about looking at each project and looking at each, um, let's, go, let's call it a challenge in front of you, if you will, and say, how can I really make something interesting out of this? And how can I, how can I report something that's personal to me? And, and that's, that's what I try to really do. Uh, um, get across in the classroom when I'm teaching the arts. Um, we have a, at Folsom High School, we have a great record with contests such as the Reflections Contest. Um, the Reflections Contest, for, for example, the thing that's really exciting about it is that they have a theme, a prescribed theme every year. And I remember I used to see that and think, that sounds like, oh, oh, oh you're, you're closing me in here. That's a cookie cutter sort of approach. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. These students are learning how to take a prescribed theme and then, and then I say to them, I say, how are you going to respond to this theme in a way that's personal, in a way that's meaningful, in a way that's really going to put you on the map so that others in your society, in your nation, in your world can, can relate to this? And, and that's when, when students see that kind of potential, that's when you see the fires going off. So what inspired you to be a teacher? Mm. That's a good question. Uh, you know, it's, that's a funny question because a lot of my friends always tease me, they always say, you know, I, I, you know, you're a great teacher, I love what you're doing, but I never would have pegged you for a teacher. Um, I have a lot of friends that actually, you know, as teachers, we stick together, we're a tight group. I have a lot of friends that, that, that are teachers and they always knew that they wanted to be teachers. You know, maybe at age seven, they can remember the first time they wrote that great little essay and they you know, I, when I grow up, I'm going to be a teacher. You know, that wasn't me. Um, a good friend of mine said, you know, Jeff, when I found out that you were a teacher, she said, um, I, I never expected it, but now that I look at the whole, the big picture, I'm not surprised. Um, 
I think the first time that I realized that I was going to be a teacher and I just kind of knew deep down and maybe I hadn't admitted it at that time, but I knew was it was pretty late. It was, uh, it was in a college art class. It was an oil painting class. Mark Perlman was teaching us how to paint. Um, and after some time had gone by, I had asked him if I could be a teacher's assistant. And it was through that process and through our formal critiques, the critique process is where we get in a formal group setting and we look at a piece of artwork and you formally critique that piece of work and you talk about, and again, this is Common Core Standards here, being able to think outside that box and really use your critical thinking skills. Let's discuss why this piece of artwork is working, whether it be sculpture, painting, whatever. Let's talk about why it's working and where it's working, why is it working. And if it's not working somewhere, identify that place and now tell me why. And I think that's great because right there, you know, that opens up this whole can of worms. A lot of people think that art of all kinds is subjective, that it's all opinion based. But once you learn how to become a great artist and once you learn the principles of art that we teach in the classroom, mm -hmm. you learn how to be able to communicate these ideas and verbalize these things and back them up with proof. And to a certain degree, that stuff's still subjective. It can still be based on opinion. But the difference is, can you back your opinions up? Mm -hmm. So and that's I, what it's all about. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. And so I think it was in those early days that I realized that I enjoyed the, the, um, I enjoy the critical thinking process and the critiquing process and the delivery of how to do this just as much as I did doing it itself. Well, congratulations to you. We Thank really you. We appreciate your time. We've been speaking with Jeff Carter, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Folsom Cordova Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Sure.